I'm Lauren, um, I'm 22 and I stay in Forfar and I'm a shift leader slash support worker for kids and adults with disabilities. So tell us your journey to Montrose then. Yeah, so I am originally from Northern Ireland um, and I first of all moved across to England and I played for Blackburn Rovers um, for a season and then I made the jump to Scotland and I played for Forfar for a season and then I went to Dundee United um, and I was there for two seasons but I only got to play for one season because then I ended up getting injured and I was out the second season and then yeah now I'm here at Montrose. Obviously this season, Montrose's first season in the Scottish Women's Premier League, for you as a goalkeeper it's a um, bit different maybe to everybody else's, sort of take us through that, how, how, how does it start and how's it going? Yeah, obviously at the start it was quite difficult. Um, I would say, to be honest, that's probably because um, a lot of new players coming in, um, me kind of gelling with the defence. And I think over a period of games and we got to know each other and understand each other and the way that we like to play. And I think now we do have a good understanding. Um, whereas beforehand, maybe at the start, you could see that we were still gelling. Um, but I think now that we are in a good place, obviously we did have had a few heavy defeats um, and I think that also comes down to that we are an attacking um, team and we do like to attack so obviously then there is going to be gaps and against the full-time team sometimes them gaps then become a bit bigger um, but yeah no it's going good now and I think we're in a good place. It's not just the mindset of a, goal, of a goalkeeper I mean take us through it I mean to be I mean your goal you, you, your goal excuse the pun is to keep the ball out of the net but obviously quite obviously earlier in the season you were having to fish it out quite a bit Take that us through what what it is like to sort of experience that, and then like so now you're at a point where you've been nominated what two two times in a row Player of the Week, and now call up to Northern Ireland. Yeah, obviously it is hard, and you know my job, like you say, is to keep the ball in the back of the net, and I am kind of that last line of defence, and that is my job to help the team as much as possible. And at times at this season, you know, I have been able to do, do that, and even in them you know, them games against the bigger teams, I still have made saves. Um, but yeah, sometimes the score doesn't really af reflect how we kind of play. Um, but it's not nice when you are then looking back on it. And, you know, I, there is times where I do look at how many I have conceded over the course of the season. And, and it is not nice. But like I say, I kind of refer back to, I think we were gelling as a team. And I think now we've kind of got a better stru structure as a defence and as a unit, and I think now we are more of a closer team. One observation that I've made from watching is because I've been to all your home games and I have watched as many as I can away that YouTube will allow me to. I've seen you a lot more assertive and um, a lot more confident, and to the point where you're not taking any rubbish from the referee anymore. <laughs> you're, you're standing your ground. Yeah, and I think uh, you know I, I, that's what we have to do, and uh, you know I think we are sometimes too nice. The refs and um, I think some of them think that they know best um, and that's just how it is in women's football and um, you know unfortunately sometimes the standard always isn't high of refereeing and you know that's what we want to work towards is obviously getting it better um, but I think for me as well obviously I was coming into a new team and you know I was just um, trying to gel with the girls and now that I am you know a lot closer to the girls um, I'm obviously getting more confident each, each week and I think to be honest I think that was kind of because I was coming back from injury as well mm -hmm. and I pride myself on high standards and I probably wasn't at the standards of where I wanted to be but now I feel like because I've had a good lot of run of games under my belt I'm now back to the to where I was before my injury. And also that standard as well trying to support ref support referees can be challenging sometimes when you know emotions are very high and you're trying to you know you try to do the right thing sometimes but the right thing might be the wrong thing if you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely, and I think it comes down to like some of the decisions, you know, if we refer to the game against Dundee United, um, you know, and obviously Cassie's now a player here, and, you know, that, that goal that won it, you know, was it over the line, was it not over the line, and, mm -hmm. you know, that decision went in our way that day, and we've not generally had a lot of decisions that have went our way, and, you know, the ref's probably been on the other side, um, but, like I say, hopefully it will continue to get better. And obviously with this now, this you know, couple, two games away now before the split, listen to your manager on Sunday, really, really sounded like he's up for it. L getting the feeling from everybody, everyone's up for it. 
how 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 is how are you feeling and how are you looking forward to what's coming up next yeah i think we should be um i think you know some of the results haven't went our way and obviously you know we'll look at aberdeen and we really do think that we should have took something away from that game and even here against glasgow city um maybe fitness did tell in the last maybe 15 minutes because obviously the midweek game um but i don't personally think it was a 5-1 game and i think we did give them a good game and you know, I don't think we've lost from the fear coming in to the next couple of games and obviously like Hamilton is in a big game before the split. Um, but I think then looking through the split, you know, every game then becomes a cup final and we have to take each game as it comes and hopefully, you know, we will create a gap and stay at the top of that bottom. And also this is where as well the gap between the tendencies with yourselves and the men. Quite a lengthy gap at the moment. What are the supporters who attend the men's games? Are, what are they missing out from not attending yours yeah well you, you could say obviously beforehand you know now that the girls are in the top league and um, you know there's a lot more better quality uh, players uh, that they can come watch whereas maybe beforehand you know there is a big jump between the leagues and maybe like they didn't know what to expect but now that we are in the top league you know you've got full-time teams coming and I think the games that we have played they have been close um, against the bottom six and you know I generally feel that you know, for the neutral, it would be very entertaining to come watch. And, you know, I think that shows that sometimes we do have more at the game, sometimes there is a bit less. Um, but I do feel like, you know, most of the games are at one o'clock on a Sunday and I personally feel that that is a good time because um, it doesn't really cut into your Sunday then, you still have all the afternoon. Um, so I definitely do think everyone should come watch. Little nudge there to everybody. <laughs> Get so... out and watch. <laughs> So in terms of nudges, who have been your main influences then like to get you to this point? Because like, so it sounds like you've had quite a journey already and your career only just getting started really. Yeah, it probably like would be my dad, to be honest. Um, he's been there every step of the way and every move that I've made, like he's always had an influence on it. Um, I would say maybe my move to Montrose, he didn't have such as big as influence on it and he kind of handed it over to me and said that if you feel it's the right decision, then go for it. Um, but he still had a part to play in it and you know, I'll forever be grateful for his support. Interest, when you're not playing football, it obviously sounds like you've got quite a responsibility in terms of your job. What do you like doing to switch off? I don't really get a lot of time to switch <laughs> off, to be honest, because if I'm not at football, then I am working. But if I can, just relax and chill out, um, watch a bit of TV. And like I say, if I'm not at football, I'm always working. But I love my job and I wouldn't change it. Always putting people first. Yeah, definitely when you're at work or just preparing to play a game who's on your music playlist just now um i think there's a few people that's on it i think flo's kind of taken over <laughs> in the last couple of weeks and but usually collie um as well and i just kind of go with the flow whatever they want to put on um i just kind of be in my own wee bubble and try focus on what's to come and focus on my own game but yeah i have no complaints about their music to be fair <laughs> movies tv series what do you what's what what do you watch just now? Anything that's worth recommending or? Um, usually it's just whatever Jade puts on the TV. To be honest, <laughs> I just kind of have to go with what she puts on. Um, but I recently watched that film me once, um, and it was good. Um, don't tell Jade that because she thinks I haven't watched it. <laughs> you do realise that she might watch this. Uh, this ain't getting this ain't getting edited out. So yeah, no, uh... that's fine. Um, so yeah, um, just a series, but like I say, I don't usually get a lot of time. So if I'm not, then I usually watch the football. Always watching football. All these places, where have you been? Where stands out? Where would you like to go? I would say if it wasn't for playing in the Northern Ireland squad, um, I probably wouldn't have been to as much country as to what I actually have been. So I've got to see some countries that I probably wouldn't even have visited, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that's actually granted me a massive opportunity. Um, but I think the big one is I would really love to go to America. Anywhere in particular? Um, California, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's a home. Maybe. You've obviously got to know your teammates for most of this season. So if none of you were playing football, <laughs> you know what's coming next. Uh, you're all just catching up with friends in the pub. Who would be talking about their time as a comedian? Um, we've got a couple who try to be comedians, to be fair. Um, probably Ridgeway and Jade would probably be the comedians in the team. DJ? Um, probably Collie. TV movie star, who's got the look? Um, probably Nevi G, <laughs> most likely. 
entrepreneur who's got the big idea? Um, probably a lot of them have an idea. It's whether or not they would pull it off, to be honest. Um, no, actually. I don't know. Like I say, a lot of them probably have an idea, but probably if it would come off or not, who knows? You never know. It might, might motivate them to actually turn it into, <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. turn it into reality. Um, wise women, who would you go to for life advice? Um, probably Tammy, because I travel in the car with Tammy a lot, so I'm always chatting to her and stuff like that. It's probably Tammy. Future coach manager. Um, probably colleague. She does it as a job. Um, but I could probably see a few of them actually going in the coaching afterwards. And what would you like to say to the supporters? Um, just a massive thank you and um, please keep coming because um, it definitely does help us on the pitch and like we do hear you on a Sunday and you know maybe when we do need that extra push um, you know it certainly gives a bit when we hear you um, and just a massive thank you um, for coming each and every Sunday and we do really appreciate it.